For project one, I've had these wooden vintage spools and I made them last year for my uh, booth space and craft shows and they turned out to be really good sellers, so I thought I'd share. And basically what I'm gonna do is just add the Dollar Tree bottle brush trees to them because the spool itself makes a good tree trunk. I'm just unscrewing the bases from the tree. I keep the bases because I use them for risers and other things. And I add hot glue to the top of the wooden spool there. And I just set my bottle brush tree on the top and hold it in place until it adheres. I know there are quite a few videos with bottle brush trees, but as long as you can find some unique items to put them in and display, they make great fillers for your home decor. To embellish the trees further, I have these wooden tags that I believe I purchased at Walmart at the end of the Christmas season last year. I tie a tag to each one of my trees and I'll reinforce it with a dot of hot glue and that'll complete my project. If you find these tags at the end of the season when the prices are reduced, um, they're great to have on hand because you can add them to just about anything and it just embellishes your project to the next level. I had one spool that was kind of wonky and it wasn't balancing very well. So I'm going to use the base that came off one of the trees and just attach it to the base of the spool for balance. Here I'm just painting the base with some brown paint and I'll glue it to the base of the spool and that should take care of my problem. And here are my trees all finished. The vintage wooden spools really make a great tree trunk for those bottle brush trees. Um, and the tags are just an added embellishment which completes my project. Let me know in the comments, what do you think of these upcycled vintage spools? <laughs>
and in a back and forth motion and using a light hand on that line between the two colors, um, I blend it out with my paintbrush. I want my upper portion of my wood round to be lighter. I'm applying more Lucky Lavender at the top and working my way down to that center line, blending those two colors together, using my Mr. Bottle and a light hand. I'm creating a graduation of colors for my ombre look. And I like what I've created so far. Next, I'm going to use scissors and I'm going to cut out my dear design. Okay, I've got my deer removed from the paper and now I want to get closer to the image and remove a lot of that white paper that's um, around it. I don't want to decoupage this onto my board and have all that white exposed. So I'm trying to get as close as I can to the deer um, to get it removed. I'm using a water method on the body of the deer here. Um, what you do is you dip your paintbrush in water and you kind of outline your design where you want the paper to be removed and you just lightly pull it off. It comes off easy, but you just gotta be careful you don't tear too much. I'm just working my way up to the antlers because once I got to the ears and things, it was getting kind of jagged and I needed a smoother cut line when I got to the antlers. You'll see, I'll, use, I'll start using scissors. This is about the point when I realized I was removing too much of the design using the water method. So I'm switching over to scissors and I'm cutting out all the white areas around his antlers. Whoops, I got a little too careless with my scissors, but we can decoupage that piece of antler to my project easily enough. Okay, before going straight to the board and decoupaging my deer, I need to make sure that the purple will not show through the lighter color areas in the design. So to do that, I'm going to paint the back of my image white um, to block that purple from coming through. After the paint on the back of my image is completely dried, I can now decoupage. I'm using Dixie Belle Paint Company's Clear Coat Satin as my decoupage medium. To begin with, I'm just going to apply the clear coat to the antlers because they're so delicate, and then I'll apply the image to my board and work in sections. Here it gets a little bit tricky, but as long as it's centered up to begin with, I can manipulate it for a little bit, but after that, it starts to dry and you can't shift anything. Now 
Now that I've got the antlers laid on the board, I'm going to start working in sections to decoupage the rest of my image. When I'm working in sections, I'll apply the decoupage medium to my board, lay down my image, and then go across my image with the decoupage medium to seal it. I'm not too worried about my entire board being clear coated right now. I just want to ensure that my image is sealed and that everything's laying down. I just need to attach my antler that I removed with the scissors and we can go on to the next step. For some added interest, I'm going to be using Redesign with Prima's Holly Jolly Holidays Decor Mold, uh, the Amazing Casting Resin, it's a 10 minute casting resin, and Finnabar's Mica Powders. First, I'm going to dust the molds with the Mica Powders. These Mica Powders um, come in various colors. I have them on my website. They're in six packs. And these color greens came from the mica powder pack, Vintage Roses. I just continue to dust the molds with the mica powders with a craft brush until it's fully covered. Next, I'm using the 10 minute Amazing Casting Resin. It comes in parts A and B. You measure them exactly the same and I pour them in another silicone cup and stir and I carefully pour into the mold being careful not to overflow the design and I wait 10 minutes for it to cure once cured the molds will pop right out and you can see the green mica powders just melted right into the resin for the next step I want to create a mask to cover my image on the board because I want to fleck white paint as if it looks like snow flurries on my piece. I have a piece of wax paper and a sharpie and I'm just outlining my design to cut out and this will create the mask I need to protect my image when I fleck the white paint on my board. Hindsight I could have probably thought this through and flecked my board with white paint before applying the image but when you're creating as we all know things come to you as you're moving along and this is my way of being able to still do what I want to do without disrupting my design. Now that I've created a mask for my image, I'm going to use a toothbrush and a palette knife and a little bit watered down paint, not too much. And I'm gonna run that palette knife across the top of my toothbrush. Just dip the toothbrush in the paint, just the top, and you don't want it smothered in paint. And you run your palette knife across the bristles, just the top, and you'll get these nice flecks. And it's not too globby, it's not too heavy. You get these nice flecks on your board. You can see in the design that the deer already had those white flecks and with me adding it to the board, it just brought it all together. Next, I'm going to apply the molds to my board, but first I wanna make sure that the sides of the molds are not white and are covered in green. So I'm just gonna cover the sides with green paint and then I'm going to apply red to the berries that are in the mold. I 
I want to create a wreath around the deer's neck, so I'm just trying to find placement with the molds that I've created. Not all of the molds will work for me as they have been casted, so I'm going to use scissors to cut off what I need to create the wreath. As you can see, I'm just trying to find placement and working with what I have to create my design. Once I've created a wreath design, I'm going to use tight bond wood glue to place all the molds on my project. To embellish the molds and make them pop, I use Dixie Bell Gold Gilding Wax. All I do is just put a little on my fingertip and I rub the high points of the molds and it really makes them stand out. For the final touch, I wanted to stencil a saying, and I thought this saying, Peace on Earth, was beautiful for this project. To secure the stencil, I'm going to use blue painter's tape, and I'm also going to use blue painter's tape on a couple of the cutouts in the stencil that I don't want exposed. I'm using a stencil brush and Dixie Bell's gold gilding wax to stencil the words on my project. I found the Peace on Earth stencil on Amazon, and it actually came in a pack of 20. There were different sayings and designs, and I thought they were all great. I'll leave a link in the description below if you're interested. For the final step, I'm shading around the outer part of my project with Dixie Belle's Best Thing Wax and Brown. I'm not adding it too heavy, and if I did get heavy in some spots, I just blend it out with a paper towel. Adding this element of shading on the project just brings it together. It pulls it all in. And here is the final look. What did you think of this project? If you are interested in any of the supplies I used, I will link them in the description below. For project three, I have this beautiful gold frame that I thrifted a while back. I am not going to paint this frame or anything, uh, but I am going to add an element from a decor tissue paper by Redesign with Prima. Here I have a portion of Redesign with Prima's decoupage decor tissue paper called Holly Jolly Hideaway. I really love this angel. I think she's absolutely beautiful and she will complement the frame that I have here. I'm centering the design on my board so I can cut it out to decoupage. As you can see, there are quite a few elements on this decor paper. 
and I'm not too worried about cutting into another image or anything like that, but I will keep the scraps and I might be able to utilize them on a smaller project later on. I'm going to begin by painting my board white so that when I decoupage my image to the board, it's more bright and vibrant. If I were to leave the board the color as it is in its natural state, my image would be more muted. I had already decoupaged half my project when I realized I wasn't recording, but I still have half the project to show you. I'm using Redesign with Prima's Decoupage Matte Gel for my decoupage medium. I'm working in sections. This is such a small project that I'm going to just apply the matte gel halfway across my board and I'm going to lay my decoupage paper down and smooth it out. To remove the excess paper from the board, I'm going to cut around as close as I can to the edge of my project. And I'll use a 150 grit sanding paper and in a downward motion, remove whatever excess is left. And this project is finished. I just need to place it in the frame and we'll turn it over and check it out. I just love her. That frame is beautiful and it complements the angel wonderfully. What do you all think? <laughs> Project four, I'm going to embellish this box that I've had in my stash, and it's going to be a Christmas tree holder with a candy cane theme. I'm starting off by using Dixie Belle Paint Company's Chalk Mineral Paint in Honky Tonk Red. I'll apply two coats and we'll go on to the next step. For the next step, I'm going to be stenciling a candy cane image on the sides of my box. Here I have a candy cane stencil. I believe I purchased the stencil through Essential Stencils online, and I think it came in a pack of three. You might check their website. They may still be available. I've had this one for a while. To begin my stenciling, I'm going to load my paintbrush with paint, but then I'm going to offload it here on the paper towel. This is gonna help for a couple things. It's gonna prevent bleed through if you've got too much paint on your brush, and it's gonna give me the crisp line that I want on my lettering and my images. I'm going to stencil this image on the two longer sides of the box, and this project is complete.
And here's the final look. These boxes make great Christmas tree holders. You can stencil any design with any theme. Thanks for watching.